Hi, my name is Tim Shryak, and I'm a solutions architect at Network to Code. And we're here today talking about using chat ops to talk to your network. So looking kind of an overview of what we're going to go through. Uh, why do we want to use chat ops? What's the value here? Um, look at a little bit of the solution and then dive into a brief demo. So what is chat ops? Chat ops is the intersection of using chat and uh, the, our, our chat applications in our environment to actually achieve work when we look at it from the IT or network perspective. So the notion that we have this chat application and we wanna be able to interact with the tooling and the devices that we have in our network and we're in our environment. Why do we wanna do this? Um, it gives us easy access to information. It's a simple, powerful user interface that we can get from anywhere, whether it's your laptop or your phone or your tablet, probably everyone already even has it as installed. So it's not something new we're introducing to the organization. It's something everyone's familiar with. Uh, we can empower the users to get access to information that maybe traditionally they couldn't. Um, it gives us a way to clearly craft this story and make sure that we can get access. Saves time, allows people to get information without uh, asking people for information or what have you. And finally, allows us to collaborate at a team level. So allowing us to uh, be able to share information with each other um, in a way because we can kind of look back at the history of what someone else did because we can see that chat history. Again, gives us simple, familiar, easy interface, uh, something everyone already knows, people comfortable with it. Um, and it's very conversational. So I can easily interact with the bot in a simple way, kind of in a natural language flow uh, where I can uh, ask questions, get responses. Um, maybe that includes dropdowns. Um, so I don't need to remember everything off the top of my head all the time um, to move that through the process. And as I become more familiar with the tool, maybe I start to remember uh, some of the commands, I can type them out as well if it's faster for me. Um, so either way, whatever works for you. Uh, you can interact with almost anything. Uh, you know, we can use the tool to interact with any network device uh, or any other tool and improving our pace of operations. So being able to just more quickly move through that information and get things done. Uh, and finally, now trans transparency, this idea that I have a way that I have a history of what's been done. So commonly, particularly when we're thinking of network engineering or network operations, uh, we often will observe someone else doing work to sort of learn a new environment as a common example. And what happens during that process is if we don't happen to remember or we're not taking notes or maybe we're recording the screen, uh, we probably are not going to remember all the details. If we're doing that kind of thing in a chat session, I have a nice, easy transcription of everything that's been done. So later on, I can go back and review. I can remember, oh, what was that command that person ran? I can very easily see that. Um, so it makes it easy for me to interact with, remember, and see what everyone else on the team is doing. Um, I have a channel where I can go and say, oh, there's a problem. Did someone else already look at that? Oh, looks like someone's already working on it. I can see them and you know, see the actions they're taking. So enabling a chat up solution. Uh, here on the Nautobot platform, uh, it is one of our uh, really full featured apps that we have available. And it gives us integrations into lots of cool tools. Um, things like Arista Cloud Vision, uh, Grafana, Kentic, uh, Cisco, both Meraki and ACI. Uh, other tools like Ansible, IP Fabric, um, all incorporated here into the platform, giving you this single pane of glass by which you can interact with lots of different tools and different components. Again, supported across uh, all of the major chat applications. So whether you're using Slack, Microsoft Teams, WebEx Teams, or Mattermost, all fully supported in the application. And we can do this securely. So we can uh, grant out permissions as we wish across the organization. And we can do that via the, the, both the top level commands as well as the sub-level commands and get very, very granular with what a user can and can't do, uh, potentially also based on their RBAC. Uh, so whatever their particular role is, we can assign them the appropriate permissions in the application, including full logging. So in comparison, just as if you were using TACAX or some other logging mechanism, we have this full log of everything that's been done as far as who did what and when they did it. So we have all of these here for compliance purposes, as well as just for general good uh, tracking. And then making it easy to extend. Um, it's an open source uh, project and it is uh, able to be extended onto. So, you know, maybe there's something that we have here in these top level commands or maybe a sub command and you want to have some little nuance to that pretty easy to extend that and add in that functionality uh, within the application. Just a little summary of some of the uh, 
applications that we have available, the bots that we interact with uh, at the moment, and we are continuously working on these. They are, they're pushing these out at a rapid pace. Um, so we're constantly adding additional ones, uh, but some of the really cool ones in here as well that we have now to start. So let's get into the demo, let's get into the fun stuff. So here in the demo, I am going to primarily use Slack uh, for demonstration purposes. And again, just underscoring the notion that we do absolutely support across lots of different apps, uh, whether it's Microsoft Teams, WebEx Teams, or Mattermost, all fully supported. Uh, but for here, for purposes in the demo, it is easier to stay in one interface uh, to make it simple to understand. So just starting off with some simple things that you might want to do in your chatbot. Uh, perhaps you want to interact with your source of truth, which of course, not a bot would be a prime example of interacting with your source of truth and getting information back from the uh, source of truth. So perhaps I am working in the data center, maybe I'm a DC ops person, and I'm tasked to go out and install a new switch, or I'm trying to locate a new switch out in the data center. And, uh, you know, I left my laptop a few rows over, or I left it in the other data center, um, and it's a long walk to go grab it. But of course, I've got my phone with me. Uh, so quickly, easily, I can uh, pull out that information there. And in this case, you know, I'm getting some rack information. So just getting that representation of the rack there uh, back from the source of truth. And like, oh, I'm supposed to install this new leaf switch in U44. So just making my job simpler and easier, saving me time as I move around and do my job. Another example that comes to me from uh, when I was a network engineer, uh, and that uh, inevitably it would be the weekend, and I am uh, just left the house for a minute, maybe to run to the store, and I get a call from the knock that says, hey, the, uh, the circuit went down over in uh, it's one of the locations, and I need to call the vendor and get a ticket open. And of course, you know, I don't happen to remember the circuit ID up top of my head, so I've got to drive back home because I didn't take my laptop with me. Uh, so here, you know, quick, easy, I can pull over to the side of the road, I can get out my phone, I can find that circuit ID, call the, uh, call the vendor, get the ticket open, carry on, right? So just easy access to information from something I've already got. And while that's cool that I can uh, look, look things up, we can also do work. Uh, so as an example, and of course struggling to type, uh, here's an example of, you know, being able to do things uh, kind of on this idea of the notion of that you're using your source of truth to provide in, uh, information and intelligence to your monitoring systems. Uh, similar to as we were discussing with the uh, circuit maintenance notification earlier today, as far as how you can use that to be able to empower the rest of your systems to make knowledgeable decisions on whether they should alert or not. Um, for here, perhaps maybe you're using PagerDuty as your paging system, and it can check the status of a circuit uh, or a device before it sends out a page. Right? So in this case, we can say, hey, let's use the bot because we know we're about to do some work on this particular leaf switch, and I need to take it out for a planned maintenance notice, uh, planned maintenance. So here, just very quickly, easily in the bot, I can put that uh, device into plan state, and now we won't uh, page out during this uh, window while we're doing our work, as a, as a good example. Just quickly, easily using chat to get things done. Other examples of things we can do with the chat bot. Uh, some other great uh, examples here we have with things like interacting with, for example, uh, Meraki. Uh, so kind of been, uh, you know, a lot of growing space here with using these uh, more uh, software defined and more cloud driven uh, type tooling, uh, being able to interact with them, being able to do things as well as get information, but also uh, you'd be able to make change as well. You know, so for example, uh, if we take a look here at uh, the, some of the uh, options we have of things that we can get. So let's just take, you know, for example, what devices do we have out in Meraki? Uh, what's out there in our, in our cloud infrastructure? And be able to get that back from the, uh, from the uh, tool and here have it uh, provided to us, you know, in a nice chatbot form. So again, just uh, showing some information, of course, here, just in the demo environment, some simple little things, inventory list. But we can also, again, uh, use for uh, doing simple, simple tasks. Uh, perhaps we want to uh, configure a basic assets port. So we have uh, some information out there. You know, maybe this is a task in the, in the help desk or in the operations. They get a call that, hey, there's a switch port out there and we, you know, we need to activate it in a, in a conference room for a new vendor that's coming in uh, or what have you. Uh, we can then uh, interact with that through the bot and be able to quickly, easily make that change uh, without having to necessarily say log into the switch. So here's a, another way we can think about using chat, which is to be able to let teams do things and empower them in ways that maybe they wouldn't have been able to do before. 
Uh, so in this case, perhaps, you know, we're going to just assign a new VLAN, and this is some new conference port that uh, needs to be enabled, right? And if we think in a traditional sense, um, maybe we wouldn't allow someone in the help desk or the NOC to do this type of job because only network engineers are allowed to touch switches. Uh, so here we can have a simple way by which we can give them a very crafted story that lets them do things that maybe they traditionally they couldn't uh, in a safe, secure manner. Uh, so now that uh, operations person can go in, configure that uh, switch port and save some time for the engineering team, as an example. And then also uh, other cool things we can do, right? Like interact with, say, a tool like Grafana. So maybe we have some reporting and we're looking at that information coming back from our tool. So let's just uh, take this uh, quick example we have of getting the uh, a graph out of Grafana. So we can uh, ask the bot for us to extract that uh, graph for us and providing that nice easy graph here. Uh, so again, simple way to be able to see network drawings as one example, or maybe get reporting on BGP routes or you know, look up whatever we might be happen to be showing our, in, in our Grafana dashboard. But also we want this tool to be easy. Uh, so for example, let's just take a look at, uh, you know, if we go over to the Grafana dashboard of this example, you can see we've got two drawings here. You know, we've got the Jersey City and we've got the New York City uh, drawings uh, up here on the board. And we say, oh man, I'd really love to be able to see that New York City one over on my chatbot because, you know, whatever reasons. Uh, so let's go take a look at how we could make that happen, uh, doing that fairly easily um, and all just here through the UI. So as we come down into the uh, Grafana chatbot, uh, we can take a look at kind of what those uh, panels are, if you're using uh, Grafana terminology, those panels are that are over on the, um, on the Grafana side. You can see here, we've got the uh, New York City and the Jersey City uh, uh, panels shown, uh, but we're only seeing one of them. So how do we fix that? Pretty easy. Uh, we can just go in and activate uh, the other one and uh, get that panel now available to us in the bot. Um, so now we've got both of those that are going to now show up over here on the chatbot side. So trying to make that as simple and as easy for someone that maybe isn't a developer to be able to use the tool to be able to make modifications like this. And we now have this additional uh, uh, site showing up uh, with the additional drawings that we can now have available to us. So again, just making that easy to interact with, say, something like Grafana um, and bring these things into our uh, chatbot side. So you don't need to be a developer, just trying to make it simple and easy. As examples. Other questions here on the chatbot side as well. I have a quick question for you. Yeah. So uh, there's there's a lot of great functionality that you have. How do you guard against something in the that you do in the chat, like killing the network? Do you, do you run this out of band? Do you have protections on this, you know, I know you've got different levels of access to, you know, to run commands, but there's any way to guard against issuing something that could be catastrophic. So, yeah, absolutely. So the, the workflows that are running here on the back end, they are all very carefully crafted and scripted. So a user cannot sort of go off book, if you will, uh, when we're on the chatbot side. So absolutely, they are, they are driven uh, in, a, if you will, a sandbox. Uh, so we're really limiting what a user can and can't do, uh, as well as we are always incorporating things like pre-checks and post-checks into our change flow so that uh, as a change goes through, if something is an issue there, we can stop that workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, but more, I'm just more specifically, do you, do you normally run this in band or out of band? I'm just thinking about if you miss something in your workflow and you shut down a critical component that you then lose access to be able to issue the command to undo <laughs> it. Does that, you know, how do you guys normally do that? Is that in band, out of sure. band? What does that look like? Sure, sure. Okay, understood. Uh, yeah, so I mean, the way that Chatpod is interacting, the Chatpod itself is simply a hook into the Nautabot platform. Uh, from there, how the Nautabot platform is reaching out to your environment could vary. Um, so in the case of Meraki, obviously we're going through that Meraki portal. Uh, if we're reaching out to equipment in your environment, you know, perhaps using Ansible or Norni or something like that, um, that's going to be the mechanism by which you uh, decide, you know, how we architect this. So ideally, yes, absolutely, it should be out of band, um, you know, in an ideal scenario. But that is going to be uh, beyond the scope of necessarily the Nautabot framework. Okay, that's fair. Cool. Thank you.